Hi, my name is Nicholas Lohman. I'm a partner solutions architect here at Amazon Web Services. Today I'm joined here by Rick from Red Hat. Hi, Nick. My name is Rick, Ricardo Garcia, and I'm a technical marketing manager at Red Hat, uh, focused mainly on SAP customers. So in today's video, we're going to discuss RHEL HA add-on. And the RHEL HA is for high availability. And we're going to be, to be seeing the implementation for SAP clusters, right? Absolutely. So we're going to start off over here in AZ1. And in AZ1, we have an EC2 cluster here. So we want to have the components of the clusters in different availability zones, right? So that we can actually achieve high availability or in, in the case of a, some problems in, in one of the, the locations, the primary location, it could be replicated in the other uh, availability zone. Correct. And I, I, and I, and I said AC, a, a, uh, EC2 uh, cluster, but this is actually just a, a single EC2 instance in this, in this case. Then we have another EC2 instance down here. That's for, for our database. For our database, yes. Let's say it's SAP HANA. All this is in AZ1. Then over here, in, we have another availability zone over here, availability zone 2. And we're going to have another EC2 instance here. Okay. This one has our. ERS on here. What is what okay? Is so that's uh, we have two levels here, two tiers, and we're going to be having a cluster for the database for SAP HANA, and we're going to be having another cluster for the actual application for the SAP application. Okay. What we want to cluster at application level is mainly the ASCS instance where all the central services are, and the ERS and queue replicator service, uh, or queue replicator server, sorry, where we have a copy of the log table. That means all the registries of the database that have been accessed at a point in time uh, will have a log table and the replication of the, this log table is here. Okay, so where's the log table at? Is that in the instance? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a copy of the table is here in the instance. Okay, awesome. So this is all in AZ2 and we have another EC2 instance here. for our HANA database. That's correct. And these are tied together with a couple different things, right? What's the first thing we're tied together well, with? Well, so the native high availability feature of SAP HANA is uh, HANA system replication, HSR. That, as I just said, is a high availability feature. The um, thing with this is that it doesn't fail over automatically. So we have primary resources here and uh, or primary, yeah, the primary uh, node of HANA here and the secondary. If there's a problem, there's no automatic failover. So HANA system replication doesn't provide uh, the means to automate this failover. That's why we want to add another layer. We want to cluster this and that's when Pacemaker comes into the picture. So we're tying it together with our HSR and with Pacemaker. That's correct. And the HSR is at the application level. It's at the database level. At the so database level, yeah. yes. But it's, it's, it's doing something similar, it's like a log shipping. So all okay. the differential transactions that are being committed to this database will be shipped to the secondary. Okay. And so there's a virtual IP that's shared between the two systems, right? Right. That's one of the resources of the cluster. So the cluster, the pacemaker cluster, will have several resources, one of them being the virtual IP. This virtual AP will uh, it will be will the SAP application will use to point to the database. So at the initial point of time on time in time, uh, this virtual AP will be pointing to this primary HANA server. That means that the SAP application will be reading from this HANA server and committing writing to this HANA server. Right. So that's thanks to the to the virtual. And our 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 ASCS here. And our ERS are going to go here yes. to the virtual IP. Mm -hmm. And depending on which one is the primary, 
that's which one the virtual IP is going to be assigned to. Correct. Okay. All right. That makes sense. And then we have storage up here between these two, right? Yeah, that's for the other cluster. The cluster at the application level for the ASCS and ERS instances. Also, uh, one of the resources that we want to cluster is an NFS server that will contain the file systems where the work files of ASCS and ERS are, and also the profiles. So there are some files with the profiles for those instances, um, so the, way, the way they are configured, and they will reside in these file systems. So this, so this NFS share is, is a service that's it's, it's high availability by nature. Yes, and it's, and, it's, it's clustered. It's clustered, yeah. so it's, it's got replication on it, so it's, it's not going down. Yeah. And both of these file systems are, are shared on here. Right. And that's so, the thing. This NFS should be, or has to be, outside of this EC2 and this EC2. It cannot reside on any of the instances in order for uh, this to be supported uh, by Red Hat, this, this, this implementation. So otherwise, imagine that you have your NFS in this EC2 instance. This EC2 instance completely goes down. So you, you're, you have lost the the NFS with all the the files that are, are needed by ASCS and ERS. Okay. So in the event that this guy goes down. Mm -hmm. If we go to this cluster again, right? So what's our pacemaker going to do right now? Is mm -hmm. that, that going to reassign us? Yeah. So pacemaker, as we said, has different resources. One of the resources is for the HANA instances. It's a specific resource. Um, what it's going to do is make this one the primary of the high system replication, so of the HANA system replication. So this will become the primary in the That's correct in the state that in the instance whenever this one fails. Right. Okay. Likewise, it will fail over the virtual IP and say now the virtual IP is pointing to this guy. So both of these servers are going to the virtual IP, mm -hmm. and where they were talking to this when it was the primary. Now they're going back over to this yes. guy, which is a primary, and this is in a completely available, different availability zone. zone. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So once this node has been uh, fixed, that's when the system replication will be uh, reestablished. Mm -hmm. In this case, as we said, this will be the primary, this is the secondary, and uh, some customers will prefer to leave this situation as it is after fixing the node of this primary, this secondary, or the customers might prefer to revert to the original situation. That's completely up to them. So that's a customer preference yes. and what the, what their practice is at, at their establishment. Yes. So if they want to stay where they're at or if they want to go back to the original where the primaries are in one, availabilities on one, secondaries and availabilities on two, it's totally up to the customer up to configura configurable. That's, uh, that's correct. And the good thing is that this might seem a bit complicated and uh, yeah, and Pacemaker has quite a lot of parameters to touch uh, when you're defining it, when, when you're configuring it. So the good thing is that we have Ansible roles to do this and automate all this creation of the cluster. So that's a really good point. So the roles are going to help us to establish this infrastructure. And because whenever we utilize roles, we're really we're going to overwrite a few variables within the roles, right. which are just kind of parameters like what what availability zone are we deploying For these example. things in? So yes. we could say this could be US East one, and uh, and the uh, and that's those are the kind of variables that we're going to override whenever we right. utilize roles. But the roles are automatically implementing good practices yes. and best practices from Red Hat, and the roles are supported by Red Hat. So it's already a hardened and or tried and true workflow that's already been tested and and is uh, is supported. Yeah, that's correct. And you make sure that your implementation of the cluster will be supported by Red Hat because you're following by using these roles, as you said, all the guidelines in the implementation. Another thing that's uh, important here are the fencing agents okay. because that's also part of the supportability in order to have a cluster supported by Red Hat it needs to have a fencing agent. So we're going to have a fencing agent here as well. Yes. So of course there's a fencing agent a specific for AWS instances. Okay. 
and that helps us to be able to maintain reboot the nodes, reboot the nodes, in and do what we need to do brain. in order to be able to get these guys to come back up whenever yes. they've they've had a failure. Right. Awesome. And that, of course, is also including the role, as we said, to make sure that your cluster is supported. So that's also and that's that's a really good point. That's mm -hmm. that's great that that sort of thing is included within the roles like the HA and all of those things. That way that you're not having to go through a uh, a PDF document with, right. with a bunch of steps. <laughs> this is this it's, is committed to automation is so that useful, so that it's it's a tried and true method. Yeah. It's like a it's like a recipe. Yeah. And we take that recipe and we use it as a as a playbook. And playbooks are more. Uh, more consistent than handbooks mm -hmm. because handbooks well, yeah. involve humans. <laughs> and we know and what humans do. We want do. to eliminate <laughs> errors, so yeah. So uh, let's let's choose the playbooks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Rick. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. Thank you guys for stopping by and uh, and learning a little bit more about Rail HA.